Welcome back, Grade Sevens. Last time it was the French. This time it's all about the English fur trade. Welcome to Lesson 4.4. In what ways was the English fur trade different from that of the French fur trade? So let's find out and let's stick around and let's learn something. That's right, it's lesson 4.4. In what ways was the English fur trade different from the French fur trade? Last lesson, we were talking all about the French. Today, it's all about the English. And you can see here, this is um, a map from the 18, from 1821 to 1870. Uh, this is the Hudson's Bay Company trading territory. Uh, we learned about the HBC, we learned about the Hudson's Bay Company. Um, this is their territory. Unlike the French, the English could care less about building a colony in uh, British North America. They had their colony down in the United States, uh, the 13 colonies, but the rest of this wilderness, they didn't, they didn't really care for. All they really wanted was furs. And in the year 1670, the Hudson's Bay Company is given an official monopoly of the fur trade. And they're in business. So what's their main goal? Well, we want to make some money. So why the Hudson's Bay? So they weren't interested in building a colony, but they sure were interested in building forts around or along the shores of the Hudson's Bay. So that's exactly what they did. It's close to the furs of the northern forests, which is perfect because the more north you go, the colder it is, which then would mean, hey, these beavers are going to have a much thicker fur to survive these harsh conditions. Another nice thing about uh, building your forts around the Hudson's Bay is the rivers to the east of the Rocky Mountains are going to flow into the Hudson's Bay, which is perfect because the British are not wanting to go out and meet the First Nations and trade with them out in the wilderness. Instead, they wanted the First Nations to come to their forts. And the fourth reason why we should use the Hudson's Bay from an English point of uh, view, from an English perspective, is that we can easily get supply ships into the Hudson's Bay within a year. From a French perspective, if you wanted to get to France, that would take you two years from the interior of British North America. From the Hudson's Bay back to England, one year. So that is going to equate to a stronger economy and better business. And life at the, at the Hudson's Bay Company posts, they weren't too bad, okay? You know, for the 1600s, they weren't too bad. I'm not saying that we're going to go there right now. I, for one, would be the first one dead. But the life at the Hudson's Bay Company posts weren't bad for the times. So to, to begin with, um, the forts were protected by upright wooden posts that were sharp at the top. The First Nations, they went to the posts. So if you were working the post, it's not like you're leaving the post. You're in there in the safety of the post. Now, the First Nations, obviously, they didn't like that. They liked the way the French did things where the French came to them. But the posts were okay because they housed your goods. They had all your supplies. They had your ammunition too. Should things go south, you had your ammunition. All the employees there, they're all the same. They're all from Britain. They're all English and approximately 40 or so would live in a fort. The 40 of you can't run the fort on your own, so you are going to need the help of First Nations. So we're going to employ some First Nations, and what are we gonna employ them doing? Well, they're gonna cut wood. They're gonna go out hunting. They're going to do all the heavy work for us. They're going to load and unload any goods that come our way. And the First Nations women, we heard earlier in this chapter, we can use them too. They'll make our snowshoes, moccasins. They will help with pemmican. They'll build the canoes. And then we're kind of just there uh, administratively there and we're running the fort that way. And we're making really good money. And you can see here, I have a picture. Uh, this is kind of the resources that you would need for a year at the fort. So they're going through a lot of stuff for the 40 British, roughly 40 British people that are living in this fort. All right, I want you to head over to your notebook and complete the questions for this part of the chapter.